first Sea Lord's personal log. 6th of February, 1911. The trap was sprung. Inside it were four German light cruisers, a destroyer, a heavy cruiser and a battleship. The Germans quickly seemed to grasp the mistake they made. The heavy cruiser, battleship and destroyer all turned to retreat, while the light cruisers ran interference. We sank their four lights, but the real prize managed to get away. This time. My current strategy to win the war is to starve Germany of resources. Based on our intel, I know that they have a weaker economy than we do. Their naval budget is also smaller, because they have to reserve a larger portion of defence spending for their army. The plan now is to continue building ships to work up a blockade. Blockading Germany will serve multiple purposes. For starters, it doesn't put my sailors at risk. It may be more glorious to engage in open combat, but winning a war without firing a shot has its graces. It means my men to get to return home safely. Another purpose is that when Germany is defeated, we will be able to claim our prize, the surviving ships of the German Navy. This way, our Navy can be even larger, which should dissuade further wars for decades. It will also give us a good look at German naval technology. We will reverse engineer what we can. It should keep our scientists busy for months and give us a technological edge for a good long period. Unfortunately, on to a next meeting, back to Whitehall, to convince the politicians to increase our naval spending. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 5 of the United Kingdom 1910 campaign. Whereas previously, it was a trap that we had set. This time, it's an ambush that the Germans have created. The Antrim, HMS Antrim, a heavy cruiser, is being engaged by a whole group of destroyers. She's going to have to fight for her life in this battle against an overwhelming number of ships. Fortunately, Antrim is pretty well equipped to deal with smaller ships. She is packing a lot of 5-inch guns. She has a couple of 4s and 2s, but it's going to be the 5-inchers that I expect the most effect from. The 8-inchers would be nice, but are most likely limited in their effectiveness. The ship has a very nice turning circle of only 310 meters. And that is at maximum speed, so at lower speed I should be able to make that even less than that. I just need to figure out where the enemy is. And they are to the east. If... Yeah, here we go. They know exactly where I am. And they're already starting to run out of torpedoes. They are very close. Because it's morning, it's cloudy. Our ability to detect the enemy is severely reduced. So what I'm going to do is keep the Antrim in a gentle port turn to try and throw off any torpedoes, because it seems that the AI does not predict torpedoes very well in a turn. They simply seem unable to make quick work of that firing solution. And interestingly, it seems that they carry very few torpedoes, meaning that they're most likely not that much of a threat. Which would be great news for the Antrim, and her ability to knock down these destroyers. Because, for example, the V5, it already expended all the ammunition. For her torpedoes, that is. Her 4-inch guns are not that likely to be terribly dangerous to the Antrim. But if I get penned, I can still get flooded. Which could open up the way for further torpedo attacks. Now, I know exactly where the V5 is. That's about the only one. Oh, there's another one behind me. But you can see that there are clouds of fog moving around the battlefield, which usually doesn't spell a lot of good. What the Germans should have done was drop torps and run off. Because I doubt that they'll win a gunfight against something like the Antrim. Not with a couple of 4-inch guns. There's another torpedo in the water. A slow port turn seems to work. There's another one. Another two, actually. And this is what I meant with the slow turn to port. The AI does not know how to work it. And especially since their torpedo range is 6, they will drop early. They don't know to drop very late, like my ships usually do. And that means that they uh, are not likely to get any kind of a hit in. At this point, I wonder if anybody still has torpedoes. Let's say no. And go after the V5. Uh-oh. 
Better damage. Destroyed main gun? Wow. They destroyed the A turret. That's pretty bad news. We're gonna have to rely on those five inches even more now. Come on. Get a grip. That ship's 600 meters out. We got a regular trained crew. Don't tell me I cannot hit that with an 8-incher. Because I really expect that I can. Come on, Entrim. Nope, missed again. <laughs> got the V4 there. She's not even firing? That's curious, because she definitely has the range. She's just not opening up yet. That 8-inch gun crew needs a bit more help. I think it's time in this episode to get up to some new designs. Again, they're not going to be my own designs. I'm going to leave that up to the AI, but I can re-roll if I want to. I know that there have been comments suggesting that I don't go for the... Oh, hello. For the re-roll route, but uh, for the ability to adjust ships. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with the re-rolls if I think a ship is absolutely disastrous. But I got three re-rolls, and that'll be it. These things can do 29 knots. So can I. I can do 28. But not if they're running away en masse. And I still want to try and get some sort of accuracy in. Come on, Antrim. I just need to get a couple of flooding hits on these things, because they'd flood out pretty quick. Especially with the main tower that's destroyed. The V1, out of ammo for the torps. That's basically all that counts for these boats. Come on, V5, how fast are you? 21 knots. 21, 2, 20, you're slowing down. Port turn. Damage main tower. This is the problem with this particular class of heavy cruiser. It does not have any armor to speak of. And its armor quality is so bad that I cannot really rely on that, for example, 0.8 inches of 4 belt to turn into 1.6. There goes the second gun. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they destroyed both of our 8-inch turrets, believe it or not. A bunch of destroyers killed the main guns of a heavy cruiser. That is a sad state of affairs. And... <laughs> you know what? I just realized the destroyer has more armor than I do. The Antrim has 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, plus 48%. The V5 has 1.5 pretty much everywhere except the conning tower, and except for the guns, plus 80%. So... I wouldn't be surprised if I'm actually struggling to deal damage against the destroyer with the Antrim. I mean, I still haven't caused any kind of flooding yet. Jesus, this is particularly sad. The V5 is probably dead in the water. Yeah, six, six and a half knots. That's it. She's not going any faster than that. The Antrim is also taking quite a bunch of damage. We already lost a funnel. The engine's out. Or one of them. Rudder's damaged. Come on. Let's go for pure armor piercing and see if I can pen this DD and cause it to flood out. Don't you dare ram me. No, we're not doing that. Caused some flooding on the V4 and some more. Let's try it on the V1 as well. I just want to try and cripple as many of these as possible. So that the Antrim can still catch them. There's more flooding on the bows. The V1 could be done. In the meanwhile, I'm pulling along the V5. So that I can pen her as well and cause her to go to the bottom. That's one down. Now it's the V5's turn. Antrim is taking a lot of flooding. Come on. Destroyed funnel, that's great. Look at how bad that ship is doing. 
everything is red. Just a few compartments on bow and stern that aren't. There you go, flooding on your stern. The Antrim's gonna need some serious repairs after this. And I didn't even get hit by a torpedo, I just got hit 187 times so far. By 4 inch and 2 inch, yes, 2 inch guns. And it appears to be the 2 inchers that are currently wrecking my ship. This is a shameful display. I lost another funnel. It's time to use some of those naval advances of ours to try and get some better ships. This is just... No. This is a disgrace. Bruised and battered, Antrim did make it out of the fight. Her crew is now seasoned after sinking a few destroyers. Uh, one destroyer took a bit of damage, but the others were simply staying out of range. They managed to get another torpedo hit off against the Antrim, and it hit. I was expecting that all the torpedoes were out on these destroyers, but they're sadly not. And they were indeed effective. The Antrim, however, successfully gained 514 victory points for the Royal Navy, versus a mere 20 for the Germans. So far, I think this war is going quite well. We have 13,000 victory points versus 3,000 for the Germans. I have 163 million. I have a 500k balance coming in. When it comes to research, we are getting pretty quickly ahead in a lot of different fields. Um, some fields that you don't really find too useful, like submarine hulls, but I refuse to set priorities. Because if I set a priority, for example, um, on armor forging, Let's have a look at what that does. This is 34 months, this is 28 months. If I click this, a priority is going to go to 51 months and 41 months. So that takes 17 additional months and 13 additional months there, simply because I'm prioritizing this. I think the priorities need a bit of work. Right, um, another ambush. Lovely. It's the Thunderer and the Andromeda. I am not particularly interested in this fight, but withdrawal is not an option. We're going to have to fight it out, and then I can hopefully open the window to change the designs on these ships. Oh boy, they're close. Especially to the Andromeda. Good lord. Um, you're going to have to slow down. We're going to have to turn away right now with Thunderer. Don't fire AP at a ship like that. Yes, it'll cause damage, but it'll most likely overpin. Torpedoes away from the Andromeda. I don't like getting ambushed like this. I don't appreciate it. At all. Thunderer, maximum turn. Because there's torpedoes coming in from three of these. This is a spread of one. This is a spread of one. And it's only the torps that we can see. The sad news is, the oh Jesus, the Andromeda is another one of those pretty bad ships that simply doesn't really have the staying power, even against something like a destroyer. Oh, good lord. Ow. Oh, no, 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 no. This thing has few bulkheads. This could be disastrous for the Thunderer. How's Andromeda doing? Bow's flooded. You're out of torps, you're out of torps. You are, you are, and you are. Uh, we're going to pull the Andromeda back. <sighs> Thunder is on 37% buoyancy. That's more like it, though. That's one of their DDs down. And the V-15 just took a massive hit from the 8-inch gun. Thankfully, the 8-inch guns on the Andromeda are still functional. As opposed to what we have just seen with the Andrim. Now, Thunder River, the regular trained crew, is capable of delivering quite a lot of damage with her eight. Or sorry, with her twelve inchers. The seven incher would be nice to bring into focus, but it's going to be a bit difficult to do that. But what I can do is go as broadside as possible, especially since I don't have to dodge torpedoes anymore. So let's pick the closest target and get Thunderer. To obliterate that target. The V4 is kind of getting the message. Oh, we're even throwing out a torpedo for good measure. 
Ah! V4 is limping away. Look at that ship. She's listing pretty bad to port. Thankfully, right now, it's not really an issue, but could very well be in the future. Once they get around to adjusting that. Glister Buoyancy is going back up. We're 60% plus. Andromeda. I'm still very hesitant to push a heavy cruiser like this into a destroyer group like this. Because they generally... There. She's being flooded because a destroyer can pen you. Main guns on the four. Secondaries on the nine. I need to start limiting some of these DDs because they're starting to really deal damage against my fleet. Thankfully, Thunderer back up to 70% plus buoyancy. Another flooding on the Andromeda? There, that's DD is done. Good. It's one less to worry about. Oh. That could have been a kill on the V9. I wonder, are the rest of the DDs just bugging out? Because they have arguably done their job quite well. Causing damage to the Thunder and the Andromeda and effectively taking them out of the war for at least a couple of months to get repaired. So the tactics for the Germans aren't bad. Come on. That's it. She's down. Enemy smoke east. Yeah, but neither ship is very capable of intercepting those destroyers. So I doubt that we'll be seeing much more of them. How far away is that smoke screen? About eight clicks. Is that moving away? Yeah, they're leaving. There, I can still see the target is here because I can uh, right click it. Yeah, it's there somewhere. We're not catching that. We were able to save our hides and, at the same time, cause the destruction of two of their uh, destroyers. So, yes, we've gained some. We've made some progress. But it's probably going to be a little expensive for the Royal Navy to get my ships back up. Now, click next month to try and get the tech in. So we're going to get that uh, one month tech finish so I can get that inc incorporated into the new designs. I was not hoping for this fight. But once again, the Andromeda taking this much damage from 4-inch guns really goes to show that I need a better heavy cruiser. The battle cost 71 of my crew members their lives. The Germans, however, did not lose two ships as I thought they did, but they lost three. At this rate, they are running out of destroyers, which means I might not even need... A whole bunch more heavy cruisers. Nevertheless, um, we are going to continue with the design of new ships. That is, if that research is finally done. Yeah, it is. I just did not get a pop-up for it. All right, ship design. We already have two heavy cruiser classes. We got the Argyle class, which is the outdated, uh, basically under-armored ship. We got the Aurora class, which has better armament and better armor. She's more survivable, but I don't have that many ships of the Aurora class in my fleet, I think. Also, the cost per month is far lower. Huh. I'm going to first retire the Argyle class of ships. It's easy to spot those because they cost more per month. That's the Argyle itself. It's going to be the Lancaster. It's an Argyle class heavy cruiser. This is an Argyle. Niobe is an Argyle. Oh, geez, they're all Argyles here. Oh, they're the majority of my heavy cruiser fleet. Okay. Um, in that case, might not be the best option to retire all of them yet. Okay, let's design a new one. Or rather, have a new one designed. It's the Armor Cruiser 5. Give me something fancy. Four weight offsets, 0.9%. That's actually not bad. A few bulkheads, though, could be problematic. She has 8-inch guns on the stern, one on the bow. An interesting positioning air for 4-inch guns and a bunch of 6-inch guns on the sides. She has Krupp 3 armor, so that's something. 
And when it comes to armor all around, she's pretty well rounded. Which means that this ship could be a very good candidate. I wonder what happens if I click redesign. Because it might be worse than what I currently have. Do I want to do it or do I not want to do it? They're 263k per month. That's even cheaper. Yeah, we're getting this class. I also want a new battleship class because uh, the battleship class that we have, the Caesar class, leaves a little bit desired. They are very weak against flooding hits. So let's get a new design for the battleships. It's going to be the Dreadnought 1. Um, here we go. The weight offset isn't that bad. They got 9 inches on the bow, 8 inches on the stern, and a whole slew of 9 inches on the sides. Few bulkheads, cramped quarters, dead slow. I'm sorry, but this is not formidable. She, well, she's formidable against torpedoes, I'll give her that. That's the best anti torp blister that I can get at my current tech level. Stereo 2 range finding. She even comes with torpedoes. But I don't like that few bulkheads option. I want my ships to be more survivable. Also, it seems that the bigger guns you have, the more power projection you have. And that means a bigger chance of getting a blockade. So, auto design again. This ship has maximum bulkheads. That's better. But her four weight offset is 9.8%, which is not going to do me any favors when it comes to accuracy. Anti-Torp 3 to keep her survivable. 10 inch gun, 10. That's a 7 and another 10. So at best I can bring 6 10 inches to bear if I go full broadside. Considering the 4 belts, mid belt, aft belt, plus 97, this is a pretty survivable ship. But light shells and a reduced complement of it is not going to make this ship acceptable. Reroll again. A few bulkheads. Okay, I get one more reroll, and that ship has to be accepted. There we go. Maxi bulkheads. Good. 13 inch guns, 11 inch gun, and another 13. Nice. These ships have Barbette 3, Crypt 3. I already like it. Citadel 3. They're not particularly quick, but they have a good amount of armor. They are just not very good at turning their turrets around, nor improving their reload. But their four weight offset is only 1%. I'm taking this design. A formidable class. Right. With a couple of these ships retired, I'm having another nice monthly budget excess, or surplus. So let's get a few of those new classes designed. This is the formidable. I want to build uh, four of those. And I know I'm going to go negative with that, but that's fine. And we're going to get a couple of the Theseus class. So that we can slowly but steadily start replacing that terrible Argyle class. Um, the Battlecruisers Colossus, Ocean and Inflexible are coming on in one month. That is excellent. They're all starting from Portsmouth. Perfect. And I'm still building... Yeah, that's the new fleet or the new bunch of ships. Considering that I'm getting those new ships online, those new battle cruisers, yeah, I'm not going to take that battle. I'm going to retire my old battle cruisers because they're pretty terrible. So where are my battle cruisers? All the way down. Yes, uh, they are the warrior class. That's the pretty veteran at this point defense, with her few bulkheads and her non-existent armor. I'm going to scrap that and the black prince. Scapa Flow, Warrior Class. Sorry, but you no longer have a place in my navy. I'm now to minus 2 million a month, but that's fine. I can keep that up for a long, long time. We've got a light cruiser and a DD harassing their destroy oh, sorry, their transport, or we have a battle between a light and a heavy cruiser. No, I don't want either of them. I do not want either of them. Finances are once again positive. That's good. I have 80 active ships. With another 9 being built. Convoy. Huh. 
Our fleet has detected enemy raiders approaching one of our convoys. We can engage and destroy them. Well, let's then, shall we? Let's. Because we got a whole bunch of destroyers here, a light cruiser and the terrible Antrim. But with my destroyers, I might be able to punch a hole in the sight leads and the Thor. And potentially these other two. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I don't mind taking the German Navy apart two ships at a time. Okay, there's Antrim, enemy spotted to the east. That is excellent because it means that our ships are in a position to screen against the, uh, the transports. Don't torp anything, don't torp anything. You're gonna move there. Uh, you're gonna move here with us. Normal formation, no torps, go. Are these all the same class? They are not. The leader of the pack is the stronghold. It's one of those terrible ships with a 4-inch gun and a single set of dual torpedo tubes. Uh, this one is at least the better class. This is the better class. This is the terrible class. And the Whippet is the better class. Excellent. Hunt me some German destroyers and some German raiders. Where are they? We have smoke spotted to these. There they are. Let's keep the Antrim somewhat at range. That's their heavy cruiser. We're still using a relatively older hull, I think. This is also an older hull, by the way. The Antrim is definitely not up to the task of defeating the heavy cruisers alone. It is very much underpowered for what it needs to do. I'm going to let the lead ship leave or bypass it mostly and go for the second and the third that's the objective Budaseya and her maximum bulkheads might be able to take a hit she's also the fastest ship that I have I think no the DDs are faster uh, regardless the Budaseya might be able to torpedo one of these heavy cruisers because she has three launchers per side and these Germans... Oh, the Germans are doing 31 knots. That's... Not entirely to my liking. Can we get, you th get the sight leads alone? Destroyer group. Go after this destroyer here. Don't torp it. Just try and intercept it. You too, Budaseya. I need to try and get rid of this destroyer before it starts torping me. If it hasn't already... It hasn't. It's trying to fire its torpedoes against the Budaseya. There it is. It just did it. Slow down. Hunt this thing into submission. Hunt it down. V15. Some flooding would be nice. The stronghold has lost her only funnel. Sorry, no, the stronghold is two funnels, isn't it? Yeah, we have half our engine efficiency left. Okay. Um, I'm going to detach the stronghold from the div, making the Ren the lead ship. Another torpedo coming in. Did we get a hit? Yeah, we got torped. Shit. Stronghold over to starboard. Prepare to torpedo the sight leads. Ren. Keep going. Rest, with the rest of your div. Where's the Antrim at? Pulled the Antrim back a bit too far. Torpedoes away from Stronghold. But that's the only two that the Stronghold has. They are 18 inch and they'll probably not be sufficient to sink the sight leads. But they'll cause damage to her rudder, I suspect. Yeah, rudder is damaged. The ship has lost most structural integrity. It's halfway down. Oh, that's going to not help her survivability at all. The sight leads just popped a turret. Stronghold, make yourself scarce. But Isaiah is so far alive, but she's not in a very nice place. Buoyancy half, structural integrity, 69%. <laughs> nice. Um, just not very nice for the survivability of that ship overall. 
Come on, I need a bit more flooding amidships, and she's gone. Thank you. Ren, finish off the side leads with the rest of your pack. The stronghold seems to be attracting attention from the Veneta and the Thor. That's good. Sightleads has another flooding on her rudder compartment. This is going to make her very slow. And it seems like she's being left to her own devices by the Veneta and the Thor. It's a bit sad for her, but hey-ho. A weak enemy is potentially a dead enemy. Ren. Torpedo the Sightleads. Because I don't know if I can keep you alive. Torpedo's away. Sightleads will detect and turn to starboard. I just need one hit, but I might not even get that. No. Nope. Thor is going invisible. She's too far away. Sightleads is zigzagging. Antrim, where are you at? Another ammo detonation on Sightleads. Sad I didn't catch that. Come on. Intercept that ship. Careful. Onslaught. This one's yours. Torps out. Onslaught. Detach. Get out of here. <laughs> She's gone. It's not quite the way that I wanted her to get out of here. So I've sunk a DD, I've sunk the side leads. That leaves their two other heavy cruisers alive. And I doubt that between the Nith and the Whippet, we can survive and deal damage. They still have plenty of ammo, plenty of secondary firepower. I think I've done all I needed to do here. I have lost one destroyer, they have lost one destroyer. I have taken serious damage to my light cruiser, uh, this one, but the ship is alive. So hopefully the ship is going to make it back to port. And well, we'll just have to duct tape it back together. But at least with her maximum bulkheads, that is more feasible than when you're comparing that to, uh, for example, one of our lightly armored heavy cruisers, a Antrim. Putting this Humpty Dumpty back together was probably more work. This time around the Germans did score quite a few victory points. 325. That's the loss of the onslaught and the damage that they did to Budisea. But they did not come away with that victory point setting uh, without taking some serious damage of their own. The 1622 victory points go to me. And this puts the German Navy at 46 ships versus 79 of mine. But considering the firepower of their battle ships and their battle cruisers, 16 capital ships combined, if I'm not counting the heavies, versus my 10, they're still not blockaded. So we still have a lot of work ahead of us. I hope you guys will join me for that in the next episode and the ones to follow. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. See you soon for the next.